Hey, it's Aldwin. And I'm Jason. This is the Ready Play Tennis Podcast. New balls, please. We put our shit together so that we can entertain to you. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Come back to life, Dick Edmer. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right? I think I feel like it's another ass comment, but Jason Jason just called you on your bluff and you, you came back and you called us an albatross? I don't know what that is. Do you know what this is? It's called entertainment in all caps. Time. Ready? Play. current um, Canadian title holder of the last 18 months. Uh, it's been 18 months since we've had a Canadian champion. So uh, we're pleased to welcome Layla Annie Fernandez to our podcast. Hi. <laughs> it's been only like a week and a half since you won uh, your first WTA title. Tell us a little bit about um, that experience. Um, well, honestly, it was definitely weird uh, because after the finals, I hopped on the plane to Miami. So I didn't really have time to settle down and celebrate it with my team. But um, a few days after Miami, when I was back home, I was finally like, like the emotions finally settled in. I was happy. I was happy. I was home with my with my family. I was happy that I could uh, celebrate with them. And I saw like all the hard work that we've been putting, the sacrifices has been paying off and we'll keep trying to do it for the better. (laughs) And you, you know, one thing I read uh, from 2019 was that you had set some goals for yourself to win a junior grand slam and to be top 200 in the world. And now sort of just under two years later, you're, you know, winning your first title, um, you're 72 in the world and continuing to be on the rise. So what, how does that sort of um, experience and where you are now jive with where you had hoped to be? Um, well, honestly, like there's definitely a lot of positives. Um, you know, I set some goals in December or even before the preseason November to, um, to motivate myself to keep uh, reaching for the better every year without putting any unrealistic goals. I talk with my coaches and we all agree on those goals. And uh, this year, uh, it may seem hard or nearly impossible, but I am set out to be in the top 10 WTA. And I think that's very possible with the way I'm playing and uh, my game. Um, I just need to like to keep getting good results uh, on every tournament and hopefully I have some luck on my side with uh, with these matches. You can do it girl. <laughs> Top 10 Thank is you. totally totally attainable. Yes. Um, we want to talk a little bit about Mexico. Yeah. Because we I mean you came on our radar honestly last year you had an incredible run in Mexico. Mm-hmm. You got to the final of Acapulco lost to Watson. Um, And then this year, of course, you won Monterrey. And I'm not sure whether you saw, but on our Ready Play Tennis podcast Instagram, we posted a story of you with like a big Mexican sombrero. (laughs) (laughs) And we we did a little emoji like, um, Viva Mexico. So we just want to know, what is it about Mexico? Is it the enchiladas? Is it the (laughs) tamales? Like what about Mexico brings out your best tennis? Well, Mexico is like a second home for me, you know, um, for for a long time, I lived in Canada, but I have some friends in Mexico. Uh, they've been helping me a lot with my tennis journey and uh, being down there, they they were always there on my matches, especially in Acapulco. They were supporting. I would hear them in the, in the stands and would like kind of like motivate me more. And then when I would go to Monterey, it would continue on like that. And this year, I think Monterey was especially special, was was very special because, um, uh, you know, after my matches was amazing. I would like walk to the shuttle bus and I would see the people in the balconies, like putting the Canadian anthem, uh, having their Canadian jersey out there. Like it had, it was like the Mexican colors, but 
they had like Canada and then my name on it. It was it was just beautiful. It felt like I was really accepted in that country, and like I felt the love and I felt like the the will for me to keep bringing them a good tennis, uh, keep bringing mm. them like a good competition, and that's what I just try to do every every match over there. Is there I would a little follow up question to that is you know is there something about the court itself that makes you play really well? I know that you know many tennis players they go to certain tournaments and they just feel so comfortable to play their best is there something about that particular court um maybe uh, I, <laughs> I don't i didn't really notice but i do, i do know it was very comfortable and uh, you know just the atmosphere just having like the people there like accepting me and just uh, just giving me like all the best opportunities i can to do my best awesome it's crazy because there were no fans. So you just got the energy from the fans as you were leaving the court. Exactly. It was just amazing. It was, it was incredibly like eye opener how much like these people love tennis and love sports, love competition. And it was, it's what I want to bring to them. Yeah. That's so cool. So we, I was really excited to see the, the match against Sorbes Tormo because obviously she had just played our girl Eugenie in the final the previous week and she gets literally every ball back which uh, <laughs> I hates because that's kind of what I try to do in my game um, but you played her so well you moved her side to side and I really felt like you picked your spots to to <clears throat> to the net and I know Alduin has a net question coming up but like how do you um how do you approach a, an opponent like her where you know it's going to be sort of a long slog match and you gotta sort of focus yeah um well, honestly it, it was a long time ago in Canada I played against uh the same style of game as Sirius Tormo just balls after balls coming back and I remember I was getting frustrated because I was hitting great shots but the balls kept coming back and I ended up losing but my dad who is who's my coach um kept telling me that one day you'll find solutions you're doing the right thing just keeping offensive going forward and uh, things will fall into place and I think that day came against Soribus Tormo where I talked to him and he just told me, be offensive. Like, don't be afraid of losing. And, you know, his mindset and his belief in my game and in, my, in me uh, helped me a lot throughout the match. And it did, um, it did put me in the right mindset to, to keep fighting for, for the win. Were you trying to be mindful of being within the margins? Because I felt you were being offensive, but you, you weren't trying to hit the lines so much, I felt. No, definitely. I don't, I don't want to hit the lines. Uh, when it does, it, it hits the line. But, uh, you know, I try to hit big targets, open up, the, open up the court as much as I can and expect that ball to come back. And when it did, I just try to open up in the other court and hopefully that it's a winner or it's a forced mistake. Can you teach me to not hit the lines? Because <laughs> I, that's what I I literally aim for the lines. <laughs> oh. think, no, that's a good one. Because I, when I was younger, I also tried to hit the lines, wanting to hit winners, thinking that's the only way to hit winners. But, <laughs> mm. you know, practice and practice, just <laughs> that instinct of hitting the bigger targets. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And then you had your next final which would was your second what was your mind frame going into the final and and you know making it different from the last final you had in Mexico um well I was definitely more ready like more ready emotionally let's say um last year I was extremely happy and then the nerves came in like oh my god it's my first final it's like uh it's a big stadium like I, I really want to win this I want to be like one for one but uh this year I was more focused on my game like I just thought of it as another match not as a final and that definitely helped and it just uh, it just like brought me to the moment and enjoy the enjoy the match enjoy playing on court and not just trying going out there to win it was more uh, like I said like bring that excitement to the people who are watching uh, from their balconies, watching from their TVs. I want to bring that joy of co competition, even though they're not there in the stands. And I think that's what uh, brought me to the win. 
That's awesome. We were so happy for you. I mean, like we just splashed your win all over our, our, our IG page. And like, I hope you understand, like there are millions of Canadian tennis fans out there around the world that were like so happy that you got your first tournament. Oh, that, that actually feels like amazing. And it means a lot too, because like this year it's hard to, to know exactly like uh, how people feel about, uh, about my game and about my tennis um uh, matches because it's not they're not there physically I don't feel right. their emotions so just to see it on Instagram and seeing like all the love that they're showing it just um I just appreciate a little bit more and it motivates a lot to motivates me a lot to keep going keep working that's awesome mm -hmm. um I don't know whether you know this but you and I are actually twins oh really <laughs> yeah I don't want to scare you but you and I are pretty much the same person Okay. So you have a birthday in September, is that right? Yes. When's your birthday? September 6th. So, okay, you're not a Libra then. No. No, you're a Virgo. Okay, so we're, we're both September babies. Okay. We're both Filipino to some extent. Mm -hmm. We're both left-handed tennis players. Oh my. And we're both, yeah, we're both French speakers. Oh, I'm a French wow. teacher. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm a French teacher here. Mm -hmm. Now, the only area where we're not twins is I don't like to go to the net at all. <laughs> like Jason, Jason is my doubles partner. And he's like, honey, you have to go to the net to finish the point. <laughs> <laughs> so Jason and I were wondering, because we did watch that match, that final, you played the net so effectively. So do you consider yourself a net player to some degree? And also for all of your, you know, Toronto, Montreal rec tennis fans that watch you and watch our podcast, what kind of tips would you give to them to kind of encourage them to go to the net? Yeah. Um, well, it's definitely a little weird because a few years ago, I, I was practicing my volleys, like normal, um, trying to bring that into my game. And in matches, I refused to go to the net because I didn't want to miss. It's a, I thought it was like the hardest shot ever. Yes. The balls are coming back. I'm, I don't have a big wingspan, so it's easier for them to, to pass me. But just that, I just kept practicing. And that match against uh, Cerebus Tormo, that it finally like clicked in. I was seeing like the angles. I was seeing like how uh, the balls like, just came in like a lot slower, which was weird, like slower for me to come in and finish in the open court uh, at the net. And I think it was just mostly instincts that came, that kicked in finally and confidence. Um, like I, I know I lost some some net points, but it didn't really deter like the the confidence in, in myself that I'm not gonna I'm not good enough or I'm not going to be able to to win points like that. I just kept trying and kept uh, following following my my style. Uh kept playing on instinct and not just uh not just playing with fear. Mhm. Mm Ooh. That's deep, Leila. <laughs> playing with fear, my god. That's like a life lesson there. Um and just one one more follow-up question because again, one of the reasons why we're twins is because you're left-handed and I'm left-handed. Jason, again, being my doubles partner, tells me all the time, why don't you use your lefty serve? Oh. Like you have a left-handed serve, why don't you hook them out wide? Yeah. So are you mindful of all the lefty strategies that you have? Is that something that you talk with your coach about before you go into a match? Definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, uh, my dad uh, would always like remind, my, remind me that I'm left-handed, so use that forehand to open up on their backhand, or use that slice slider on the outside to open up the court. Because most of the time, they're going cross court to my forehand, or they're gonna go in the middle. So I got the whole down the line open. And um, every practice, we were like, he would remind me like, "You're lefty, so don't play through the court. That's what they like. That's what they're used to. So just use your angles, use your." hands where you can open it up and uh, just see where it goes and like if they hit a great shot then they hit a great shot you just keep doing what you can do great advice mm -hmm. great advice i wanted to talk to you about what i've dubbed your Layla isms 
<laughs> we have some wonderful um, routines yeah. on the court. Um, the um, quick ball bounce at the service line, the sort of jump kicks um, as you're waiting to uh, return. Um, I love also the crouch as you're about to receive serve. It's very, very deep. Um, tell us a little bit about sort of those routines, how they came about um, and how they're sort of important to your focus. Yeah. Um, well, the, the butt kicks the go behind the, before the return of serve or for the, the serve and the ball bounce came about one, during one tournament in, in Quebec. It was a national tournament. I was young, I was playing in an older category. Um, and I remember specifically that my dad was telling me like, you don't have any energy, like what's happening? Like it, you're hitting fine, but your attitude and your demeanor on court doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem mm. like you wanna compete and I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I do want to compete. And he's like, well, you got to find something to like show me and like show, like bring out that extra energy because I know you can do more. So um, that night, I think I watched Nadal play actually for the, in the U S open. <laughs> it was just so intense. And I'm like, you know what, on my next match, I'm going to be just like him. I'm going to move my feet faster. I'm going to be more intense than, than what I was. And I think I lost that match, but it just brought out an extra like um, an extra like level of intensity, an extra level of focus, an extra level of wanting to run to the balls and win it. And since then, I just kept doing it over and over and over again. And I, I know some players were getting frustrated with me because I was taking like the time with bouncing the balls, the butt kicks. I was, it was like too much for them how much they saw me like move and my dad was like good like get them get them frustrated <laughs> use that to your advantage and you know it's uh, it it was born from there and I think with the routines that I've set out with the moving my feet between points uh, between games it's just so that I can calm my nerves mm -hmm. like there's some nerves there's some thoughts that go into uh, an athlete said that you don't want so you gotta do something that's very comfortable for them. And for me, it's just keep moving my feet, uh, being more intense and just focus on the, the moment uh, right now. So that's like one way to bring back to reality and not just from the future or the past. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just in the small amount of time that we spent with you, I, I'm sure Jason can agree with me, but you come off as a very grounded person, very grounded, <laughs> truly very grounded, very mature. But I think a lot of us forget you're just 18 years old. <laughs> so, you know, one of our questions that we wanted to ask is, you know, especially during this time of pandemic, how have you kind of kept your mind together now that you're not able to travel with your entire entourage? How do you connect with your friends? What does that look like for you? Um, well, it's honestly, it was honestly very hard. Uh, beginning of pandemic, I was like, yes, I can spend time with my family, uh, my younger sister, we're finally at home all together and everything's great. But then as the weeks go on and the like, tournaments weren't gonna be played, uh, I think we're, we were all a little bit disappointed and that brought our mindset to a level that we will say that it's not positive. Um, mm and we weren't uh, on the greatest mindset of playing tennis. So we, I think we took like a few weeks off, try to do our homework, school, finish that, and try to do more things outside of the court that doesn't just define me as a tennis player, but more as a Leila Fernandez. Like I'm, I'm 18, uh, 17 at the time, I, I have lots to, to do, so. We just had fun and then a week later let's say we i started playing tennis again and it was feeling better it was a lot more fun uh my sister was there we were like had these banters on court like uh like sisters would would have but at the end of the day we were just all a family and we were having fun and during that time i didn't have friends to text and tell them 
I only had my sisters, my older and my younger sisters, and they were just so supportive. Like they're my best friends. Uh, oh. Every time I have a problem, I would text my older and my younger sister, and they would always be there encouraging me. Sometimes they would tell me the hard truth, which that's not what I want to hear, but it would help me to be a better person and make the right decisions. So yeah, I think I was just lucky enough to have sisters, have a great family uh, around me uh, during those times. and. Even now, it's hard, so I would just try to text them as much as I can, FaceTime them when our schedule aligns, and uh, that would bring bring me back to Earth, basically. Mm. Great. That's great. Speaking of family, obviously, there's a lot of great uh, Canadians making their mark now. We wondered if you have sort of um, a relationship or like a WhatsApp chat with some of the other <laughs> Canadian players and you know speaking of what you were talking about in terms of bringing the intensity could we get your dad on the phone with Milos because I think he <laughs> could use a bit of in that intensity that you, you have. Oh, um, well for, for your first question like yes um, we do try to keep in touch uh, with one another uh, the, oh. as Canadians like we try to support us uh, each other as much as we can um, and I'm following Bianca's uh, scores in Miami and it's just amazing how much uh, how much she's been through and then now she's in the finals and uh, hopefully we'll get a we have another Canadian in the finals what is it three weeks in a row now uh, yeah. so that's a uh, that's great news for us Canadians and uh, we want to keep keep the momentum going as much as we can and uh, we're just excited that if, that the Canadian tennis is on the rise and that we want to keep uh, encouraging more younger generations playing tennis and just have them have fun on the court and not just there to do a job just there to have fun and play with the play with the ball mm -hmm. um, um yeah so we I mean I'm sure you know like as a Filipino person, anytime a Filipino person gains any kind of fame or celebrity because of their skill or, or whatever, we like to claim them. <laughs> and when we, <laughs> tr truthfully we do, and when we posted that we were going to interview you today, so many Filipino fans like slid into our DMs, so many Ecuadorian fans sli <laughs> slid into our DMs, and they, we essentially want to ask you what you know, how does your identity as a Filipino or and Ecuadorian, you know, motivate you in tennis? Did you have role models? And if you can remember, my last question is like, what's your favorite Filipino food? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, you know, having having them having those both communities, uh, sending me messages uh, like I read I try to read all of them but I read most of them and they just bring me like joy like it, I'm just so happy that I'm able like to touch both communities uh, the best possible way and them sending me messages just motivates me like I said more to uh, improve give back to the sport give back to them by playing the best tennis as I can with the best attitude and um every every match on court I try to I try to do that I try to play beautiful tennis something that they would enjoy and uh, when I read the read those messages I see that it it is helping um you know I'm 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 a little disappointed with myself because I don't eat much Filipino food uh, <laughs> more Ecuadorian South American food and I feel bad because I do want to learn more from our Filipino like uh, family like Filipino um, uh, lineage but I I've been traveling so much that sometimes I even like I'm, I don't even know what type of food I'm eating <laughs> so I just try to eat what what's comfortable for me but you know once I get home and I have more time, I'll definitely like ask my family, my mom <laughs> to cook some Filipino food for us. I will my I will ask my mom to make you a pot of dinuguan. Have you have you have you heard of what that is? <laughs> no, I haven't, but it sounds interesting. It's like haggis, like Scottish haggis. So <laughs> like yeah, like intestines boiled in blood. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. That would definitely be interesting, but you know, I'm willing to try. <laughs> not before a match. Not before a match. No. Yeah, not before a match. <laughs> not before a match. 
when this interview gets released, believe me, Filipinos will send you food. <laughs> they will oh, send you food. Awesome. I, would, I would love that. Like, send me recipes, send me food. Like, I, I would love to try. Awesome. Um, are we going to go to the game, Jay? Yeah, I was going to say, before we get to the game, <clears throat> I do have to ask one question that a lot of people were interested in as they watched you in your semifinal and final, particularly um, the gay fans who um, listen to our podcast and watch our podcast. They were wondering who the handsome gentleman was in the stands with you and if they could get his phone number. Uh, <laughs> particularly, particularly Aldwin, who's single. <laughs> Oh my God, you totally did me dirty. <laughs> <laughs> you threw me under the bus, huh? <laughs> um, that's, that's funny. Um, his, his, he's actually my coach. Uh, his name is uh, Romain Dare Dare. I, he's my ah. second coach. Like, he travels with me since my dad is traveling with my younger sister. So <laughs> and I can't be two places at once. He can't cut himself in half. So, you know, we, we brought in someone um, to the team and he's been a great addition. Um, so he's been there positive and uh, he's been helping me throughout the tough times and uh, pushing me to be better. Love that. Um, the, the thing is, like, I don't know if he is single. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, to answer the question. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he's a lot of attention, but I'm glad that he's, he's, you know, helping you with your game. Obviously, that's more important than whether yeah. he's <laughs> No, definitely. So Layla, Jason and I on our podcast, when we interview players, we like to wrap up with a game called The Changeover. Uh-oh, okay. And so no pressure. It's just a fun little game. It basically is like a rapid fire question game. So I'm going to either give you a choice between this or that, yeah. and you choose the one like that kind of you connect with right away. Okay. And then there's going to be a couple of like favorite questions. So the idea here is like not to think too much, but yeah. just to kind of give your instinctual answer. Okay, I will. Go Sounds on. good? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. He's ready. All right, guys, let's go. Forehand or backhand? Forehand. Jollibee or McDonald's? McDonald's. Uh, Monterey or Acapulco? Oh, you, that's hard. <laughs> you can oh. say both if you want. I'll say both because I love both of them. <laughs> okay. Um, curly or straight? Curly. IG or TikTok? IG. Justin Bieber or Harry Styles? Justin Bieber. <laughs> of course. Canadian, right? He's Canadian. <laughs> um, what's the emoji that you use most on your phone? Uh, the laughing emoji. The one that's laughing and then there's tears coming out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> awesome i like that um okay uh, your fans also want to know what is your favorite walkout song so at tournaments when they introduce you what's the song that you would like to hear or that has been played that you're really like yes this is Layla fernandez wow um that's that's hard because every week i have a different song <laughs> so, um but my favorite song up to now songs would be either Rebel Yell, Billy Idol, um, Dancing With Myself, or uh, Rock of Ages. Okay, wait, Dancing With Myself by Robin? No, or by oh, Billy no, it's Idol. A... Like, uh... Billy Idol. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Um, She's 18, but an old soul. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, okay, I always wanted to know this about players, and so I'm glad that we're asking you, what's the weirdest thought that you've had while playing a match? Like, have you ever thought to yourself, I have to do laundry tonight? <laughs> um, no, it's homework, actually. Like, <laughs> when, when's my assignment due again? Oh, yeah, it's, it's tomorrow. Okay, so let's, okay, still got time. You're not going to get to your assignment. <laughs> yeah. And the last question to wrap up our game, Layla, is what are your goals for the rest of 2021? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the most important goal for me is to finish the year healthy. So physically, no injuries, mentally, emotionally, still wanting to play, like not feeling down about myself with the end results or uh, not feeling like too good about it, uh, always wanting to improve. 
Uh, but um, result wise, like I said, I would love to be in the top 10 in the WTA. Um, like it was to win a few tournaments in the WTA tour, a 250, a 500, and then hopefully getting far in the, in the Grand Slams in the second week. Amazing. <laughs> so amazing. Well, we're very excited to have had a chance to chat with you. Who knows what's going to happen and whether we'll get to see you here in Canada. We're on lockdown again, if you haven't oh, heard. No. Uh, so, I'm hoping everybody's staying safe and uh, healthy and like soon all this will be over. Yeah. And I, we are so excited and hopefully, you know, the Rogers Cup happens, hopefully. hopefully. Yes, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I really want to go back to Canada, play Rogers Cup. That's one of my favorite tournaments to play in. Amazing. Layla, one more thing that we forgot to mention. Um, when things are safe again, obviously Jason and play, Jason and I play on the Gay and Lesbian Tennis Association Tour. There are tournaments in, in Montreal, Coupe de la Reine, that happens. Also yeah. in Toronto called the CGO, the Canadian Gay Open. We extend a warm welcome and invite you to those tournaments anytime you're free. And believe me, like the Toronto and Montreal fans are just crazy for you. So we'd love if you could visit. Oh, definitely. When I'm in town, I'll be, I'll be like texting you. I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there running. <laughs> amazing. I like it. That's amazing. Thank you again, Layla. We wish you all the best in 2021. And we will see you at the end of the year when you're in the top 10. Yes. Thank you. Uh, hopefully I'll see you at the Rogers Cup, actually. So. Yes. Great. Okay. Have a great day. Thanks, Layla. Bye, Layla. Bye. Thank you. We're here for your tennis-tainment, or your tentertainment, or whatever it is. But if you like what we're serving up, please give us a five-star review. And like, share, and subscribe, and like such as. Wait, one more thing! Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Ready Play Tennis Podcast.